Hi there, Brian Hopkins here. So it's the week leading up to Easter, and that Holy Week kicks off with what we've come to call Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday, as we all know, is the day Jesus arrived in Jerusalem after raising his friend Lazarus from the dead. And because they'd heard about this remarkable miracle that Jesus had performed, burgeoning crowds met Jesus at his arrival. They laid their coats and palm branches from the trees all over the road for him and his donkey to travel on. And at the very same time that all those people are celebrating Jesus, rejoicing at Jesus, the religious elite, what are they doing? They're plotting Jesus' death. Luke chapter 19 verses 36 to 40 records the scene. See if you can just picture this in your mind's eye. As Jesus went along, people spread their cloaks on the road. When he came near the place where the road goes down the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices for all the miracles they had seen. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven, glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees, those religious elite in the crowd, said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. I tell you, though, he replied, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. What a scene. But here's the thing. When you and I reflect on Palm Sunday today, we know what's coming the next Sunday, don't we? We view everything about the week leading up to Easter Sunday through that lens of Jesus' resurrection. He's rising again. But at the same time, on that first ever Palm Sunday, they don't know what's coming that next week. The crowd saw a man who had raised someone profoundly from the dead. The religious elite saw Jesus as a problem to be dealt with. And on that Palm Sunday, crowds rejoiced, praised God, celebrated Jesus. And when the religious elite criticized Jesus for allowing it, he said, if they're silent, the stones are going to cry out. Now what about us? What about you and me? As we're going about our day, as you're going about your day, what does it look like for you to spend time today rejoicing and praising God and worshiping Him? If Jesus says that the very stones will cry out, then what should worship look like for we who understand the significance of Holy Week and everything that comes after Palm Sunday? We worship in our weekend worship services, absolutely, and it's amazing. And there's more to worship, isn't there? Today, as you're at work, that's meant to be worship too. As you're in your classes and doing homework today, that's meant to be worship too. As you're serving people around you through acts of compassion, that's meant to be worship too. Colossians 3.23 compels us to worship God as a way of life. Whatever you do, Paul writes, Work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord. That's worship. Have a great day. Can't wait to see you in church on Easter Sunday.